A Dose of Buckley is made possible by viewers like you. I don't know if PBS has that trademarked, but what are they going to do, sue me? They can't even afford to give away tote bags anymore. Support the habit at patreon.com slash dose of Buckley. In the eight years of doing scumbags of the internet, I don't think I've ever done a follow-up video. And I don't know why, I mean, there's got to be some interesting stuff there, right? Are the red jumpsuit apparatus still stealing work from photographers? Is Carla still trying to find a token homosexual man to befriend for selfish reasons? Is the guy from my very first scumbags of the internet still trolling Kijiji for women to fuck him in exchange for a free trip somewhere? I can't answer any of these questions, but I can tell you what our most recent scumbag, Coffee Karen, has been up to. Yes, back in June, a woman went viral for trying to get a young man fired from his job at Starbucks because she refused to wear a mask for the four minutes it takes to go in, get an overpriced coffee, and get the fuck out. As many in my comments section pointed out, a GoFundMe was started for the Starbucks barista and eventually surpassed $100,000. I think that's kind of stupid, but whatever. People can spend their money however they want. But Coffee Karen supposedly threatened to sue to get half of that, claiming that the reason that he got it was because of her. <laughs> what a mindset. Not quite the same, but I can imagine her hitting someone with her car, them getting an insurance settlement and going on disability because they can't work, and her going, Hey, I want half of that. The only reason you're getting that money is because of me. So that whole Starbucks thing was months ago, and obviously, she's realized. Okay, I've stepped back from it. I'm a rational adult. I realized I was in the wrong. I shouldn't have screamed at a Starbucks employee and taken their photo and slapped it on the internet. Right? <laughs> no, of course not. In fact, she's trying her absolute hardest to recreate that 15 minutes of fame over and over. First, she goes to another local business. No mask, of course. Phone at the ready because she's trying to get into these altercations now. She knows what she's doing. She starts filming a woman, and that woman, of course, isn't happy with that. No one wants to be filmed in public, whether that's legal or not. Well, unless, of course, you're trying to become a viral sensation. And this lady slaps the phone. But here's my favorite part. The reason she's most upset is because it's not getting her any attention. This isn't going viral, I assume I am being shadow banned. Isn't it cute when these conspiracy people teach each other phrases? You aren't going viral because you had your 15 minutes of fame and no one cares now. Not because you're being suppressed, everyone just stopped paying attention to you and moved on to the next joke of the week. But she keeps her Facebook account public because she wants this attention. And I'm very well aware that I'm just feeding that but it's all in the name of seeing what happens after a person becomes a viral sensation. Consider this a documentary. By the way, I know we all want to, but when you come in contact with these types, don't engage them. If they start filming, just shut the fuck up, turn around and walk away. We have them here sometimes, people not wearing masks, ignoring the arrows in the grocery store, and then they try and make eye contact with every single person they pass, shoulders all tense, like they want a fight. I'd take these people's medical exemptions or whatever more seriously if they just kept to themselves. So then, she drags her kids into it. She goes to some place that has pony rides, and this is the part that's disgusting. She knows what's going to happen. Using your child in your crusade? That's fucking gross. So, I'm sure the interaction went like this. Hello, I'd like one pony ride for my daughter, please, and thank you. And they said, without a mask? Absolutely not. We're liberals, and we hate freedom. These ponies are for liberal sheeple only. <laughs> so it's back to Facebook, video of course at the ready, and asks her followers to go review bomb this fucking business. They don't, by the way. She desperately wants to be an influencer, but no one is influenced by her. And their side of the story is that they offered to give the child a mask to wear for the duration of the pony ride, and Coffee Karen made a scene. She points to the WHO and CDC guidelines that say children 5 and under shouldn't be required to wear masks. So now she cares what the WHO and CDC have to say? <laughs> Interesting. By the way, that full WHO guideline that she's referencing also says, There may be local requirements for children aged 5 years and under to wear masks, or specific needs in some settings, such as being physically close to someone who is ill. 
In these circumstances, if the child wears a mask, a parent or other guardian should be within direct line of sight to supervise the safe use of the mask. So they just suggest keeping an eye on your child, which presumably you would be while they're riding a pony, unless some other opportunity to go viral catches your eye. Sorry, honey, gotta go. Mommy has another chance to make a scene for likes on the internet. Now, if you needed more proof about how out of touch with reality she is, besides the fact that she likes and believes in crystals, by the way, remember when that type of shit, along with yoga, was for leftist hippies? She also shares this. Time travelers. A bunch of celebrities next to portraits or statues that kinda look like them, suggesting that they're part of some conspiracy. She then writes, I heard all our presidents and leaders are of royal blood ancestry and time travelers for the Department of Defense trying to influence time in New World Order favor. The rabbit hole begins with Project Pegasus. Holy delusional dipshits, Batman! She also believes in the QAnon conspiracy that Chrissy Teigen, who recently had a miscarriage, is trans and was never pregnant and is also a pedophile. She also shares other posts that Facebook has marked as not true, like one claiming a swab from a mask worn for 20 minutes produced this petri dish full of fungus, which microbiologists claim would have had to been grown for a long period of time and fact checkers couldn't determine an actual source of the image. This chick's out to lunch and she's not coming back. Anyway, in between trips to Walmart for maskless shopping with her friend to prove a point, this video, by the way, also includes unblurred images of children. For a person who's worried about New World Order pedophiles or whatever, she's pretty comfortable with filming and taking photos of children to put online. Anyway, she's also trying to start a class action lawsuit for mask discrimination, which is organized by a group who is also trying to fight the no shoes, no shirt, no service signs in stores. Specifically, the no shoes part. They think it's discrimination for people who want to go barefoot in a store to not be allowed to do so. That's who you want to align yourself with. Weirdo foot people who refuse to put a fucking pair of sandals on to go into the fucking mall. And if you thought it couldn't get any better, the icing on the fucking cake. Did Rosa Parks harass the minimum wage bus driver by sitting in the front of the bus? She believes she's Rosa Parks that what's happening to her is the same as the discrimination that black people suffered in the 50s when they were being treated as second-class citizens by being forced to sit in a specific part of the bus, drink from different water fountains, and go to different schools. Totally the same as not being able to get a fucking coffee because you refuse to cover your mouth for a few minutes in public during a global goddamn pandemic. Yeah, I guess coffee Karen's the same. If instead, black people and white people all had to sit at the back of the bus because there was a safety issue with people sitting too close to the front, and she was like, I don't care about safety. You're telling me I can't do something, so I'm gonna do it. It's my right as a citizen to be as big a public nuisance as possible. So I think I figured out why I shouldn't do these follow-ups. Sure, this is funny, but it's also just sad. It's sad to see that someone hasn't learned anything, and even worse, they've leaned even further into the idea that they are both the victim and the hero. When you're out comparing yourself to Rosa Parks because you get into arguments with workers over fucking pony rides for your child, and you don't see the difference, there's no redemption. Best to just forget about them. Pretend they don't exist, because they don't. They're not living in this reality, that's for sure. They live in their own world, where up is down, day is night, and being refused a coffee or a pony ride because you get all your medical information from bullshit memes is the same as being treated differently because of the color of your skin.